He said, several months ago, when he was still here, and uh, I'm not sure what the message was, but God just placed on my heart and on, in my spirit a, a, a burden to talk about his voice. It was a tug on my heart. No matter how many times I tried to study something else or think about what else I could talk about, I just kept on getting, kept on getting turned back towards God's voice. God's voice. He wouldn't let me off the hook. He must have known that something was coming. Uh, because just roughly a month ago, uh, we started being affected uh, by issues, both locally and internationally, that, uh, that really caused very heavy hearts on the folks that walked into the doors. Yes. Uh, we talked about this a bit last week, and once again, you can go to the, to the YouTube channel and, and kind of track with us and, and hear about those past sermons. Uh, but, It started with the, uh, with the nightclub shooting in Orlando. It was about a month ago, maybe a month or a couple of days. Um, and then uh, we lost a dear sister in our congregation, uh, Janet O'Keefe. Um, the Moore Memorial Service on Monday was, was absolutely beautiful. Um, many thanks to everybody who supported by working, by attending, uh, by, uh, by just praying and, and, uh, and sending their prayers off this way, our community really showed up. And I think that the, their family uh, was grateful. Uh, was grateful for that. And so, within days of her passing, there were two police-involved shootings. And uh, that set a cascade through social media and through emails and through uh, conversations had at water coolers and there was all of this stuff uh, going on with that, and in some cases, there were uh, retaliations, retaliations that, that caused even more tension. That was followed up by a, a deadly rampage shooting in France, uh, and, and then just now, just this last weekend, it's turning on the news that something's going on in Turkey. Yes, yeah, cool. Right? And so there's all of these things that, that, are, that are going on, and it's all happening at once, it seems. Uh, and, and it just causes me to think, going on. causes us to kind of throw our hands up and say, what are we to do? Did anybody ask themselves that question? Yes. Can I do? Yes. Amen. I did. On second Saturday prayer last Sunday, God dropped a set of scriptures into my spirit. Uh, and that's one of the most effective ways that he uses to speak to us so that we can hear his voice and get to know his voice. And that's through his word. You see, once you invite Christ into your heart, he doesn't have to speak to you through your outer ears. He speaks to you through your inner ears. Okay? Once he's taken up residency inside of you, he doesn't have to think about the things that we have to think about in the back, the things that we obsess over. Is it sound right on this side? Is it right on this side? No, he's already there, and he's writing on your heart. So God spoke to me. He speaks to you through his thoughts, through your thoughts. There are times when he will speak audibly. The times of when great faith is needed, he'll speak audibly. But more often than not, what we experience is the still, small voice. Behind all the loud junk that we fill up our, our, our minds with during the things that are bouncing around inside of our head. I'm going to read from James uh, chapter 1 starting at verse 2 in the NIV. Yeah. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking in anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously without finding fault, without finding fault, and he, it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from he is double-minded, 
and unstable in all that he does. We're going to move down to verse 19. Verse 19. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, mm -hmm. slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Amen. For man's anger does not bring about the righteousness of God. Yes. Amen. It does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word which has been planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Yes. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away, immediately forgets what he looks like. Yeah. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law, that gives freedom, and continues to do this, not forgetting what he's heard, but doing it, will be blessed in all he does. If anyone considers himself a religious man, if anyone considers himself religious and does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself with yes. religion as well. Yes. Religion that, our God, that God our Father accepts as pure and false is this, to look after orphans and widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted well. by the world. Amen. I just, uh, why did he put those scriptures in my heart and why did it resonate so much? That's what I kept asking. That's what I kept asking over the last couple weeks. I don't know about you, but it's amazing that 11, written halfway around the world, 2,000 years ago, can convict me here in Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Maryland in 2016. Amen. Okay. So I just, that's, that's how we know it's God. That's how, that's how we know it's, it's, it's God breathed and God inspired. It means just the same. It means just as much now as it did then. Amen. And so I just want to dwell on this passage this morning. And hopefully it will drop down into your spirits as well. And hopefully it will overflow. And you can share it. During the course of the week. Amen? Amen. So we're going to start back in verse 2. <coughs> Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. It was really clear to me when I read this that we are going through trials mm -hmm. right now. He says in his word to consider it joy because we're being perfected. That's hard. Amen. Anybody else agree that's hard? Yeah. When we see injustice on TV and we see stuff in our social, social media stream, it's hard to consider it joy. Amen. It's difficult. Every place I went, someone was talking about it and asking me how I felt about it. Uh -huh. So it just kept bubbling back up, and the anger and the frustration and everything else just kept bubbling back up. That's hard to find joy in. That's hard to find joy in. When we see our loved ones leave us, when we see our family members, our longtime friends, it's not easy to count that joy. If we're not prayed up, if we don't have a relationship with God, if we're doing all the talking and none of the listening, it's difficult. We might put ourselves into a ditch that's hard to climb out of. We can turn people away from the faith. We can turn people away from God by the way that we react to our trials, to the situations that we deal with in life. So, our faith is being tested in these moments. Faith is the substance of things and the evidence of things When things look like they're going the wrong way for us, are we going to lead on our own understanding? Or are we going to listen for him? Are we 
get eternity. When God's plan is unseen, unseen, evidence of him working in the background is not readily apparent to us. Are we going to seek to pick a fight on Facebook? Or are we going to put our face in his book? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's really where we'll hear what the Spirit is saying. It's not going to be, it's not going to be on our social media. As believers, it's critically important to, to seek him because we have the opportunity and the ability to be demonstrators. Yeah. And change agents where times are difficult. Yes. Instead of following the crowd. Perseverance. Perseverance is a quality that allows someone to keep trying to do something. Yeah. Even when it becomes difficult. Yeah. Yes. So that's what he's saying. Testing your faith produces that perseverance. Yeah. Today, in the situations that we deal with all the time. Matthew 7, 13 and 14, and I did not get this to mine, so not as long as it's not up on the screen. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, Enter through the narrow gate. Yes. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life. Amen. And only a few find it. Yes. Do I hate social media? No. Those of you that know me and your Facebook friends know that I'm very active on social media. Amen. I'm an active user. And I try to engage people all the time. But I also try my hardest not to post out of impulse or in the heat of the moment. That's the time that you'll find it the quietest. Amen. Amen. for you. Moving on to five. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and that wisdom will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the person who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to hear or receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Maybe your first reaction to injustice when it comes about, is to get angry and shout. Mm -hmm. Maybe on the other side of the road, maybe it's to go bury your head in the sand and hope that everything gets better on its own. Yeah. I'm encouraging you, and by encouraging you, I'm also challenging you and challenging myself to turn to God and ask for wisdom. Yes. Amen. His Amen. word says it's a promise. Yes. He will give it generously yeah. to all who ask. Without finding fault, he won't be mad at you. If you ask for wisdom, they'll receive it. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're at the cubicle, at the water cooler, in your car. When that bad news comes, when it shows up, stop yourself. Because there's going to be another voice telling you what you think you should do. Everybody knows. Y'all hear me talking. Amen. Stop. Listen. Slow down. Trust me, there will be no shortage of people who are rushing towards the broad road and who are acting, uh, acting impulsively. Mm -hmm. they'll, be, they'll be there. Mm -hmm. Don't doubt that God will come through and give you what he has promised you and give you exactly what you need. He will meet you at your point of need Amen. if you ask him. Praise God. But, when we don't give God a chance to talk to us, we've already made up our minds. We already think to ourselves, God can't step in on something like this. And so we've already established, you know, plan B, C, and D. If you have a closed mind and you don't turn to God, you've already hardened your heart to what he's trying to give to you. You've already hardened your heart to what he's trying to say. You'll be unwilling to listen when the Spirit speaks. Yes. This gives ground for the enemy to use his tactics. Yes. And the next thing that happens is fear will be established. Yes. Obsessiveness, worry, condemnation, 
confusion, and discouragement. Mm. Don't be fooled. These are not God. That's not God's voice. That's not what God gives to his children. What God gives, he gives comfort. He gives encouragement. He leads. Amen? He reassures and he stills us when the storm is raging. Verse 19, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. I know it's hard. I know. Yeah. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Therefore, get rid of all more filth and evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word which is planted in you, which can save you. Yeah. Humbly accept the word that's already planted. It's inside of you. But first we have to be humble. Second Chronicles 2 and 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will hear their land, heal their land. So the problem is that pride and humility can exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We have to let go of pride. We have to let go of our entitlement, entitlement, because it doesn't allow us to be humble. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to let God speak. And when God does speak, and we allow that to happen, we will be saved. Yes. He will save us. The exact times that it's hardest to pray is the times when we need it the most. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 and 26 says that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Amen. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us. Yes. Intercedes for us through wordless groans. You don't have to have words. Amen. You don't have to speak. His presence is enough. It softens our hearts and prepares our minds to hear from Remember, once again, that our faith in this is being tested. Are we going to trust ourselves and our own understanding? And consider the things that people did to us in the past, or the things that we saw in the past, and apply that to the, the current situation? Or are we going to allow ourselves to be perfected? Amen. 22 says, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in all they do. Hallelujah. Have you ever done that? Talking church folks now. <laughs> Have you ever done that? <laughs> Have you ever heard a lesson, thought you understood it, but then as soon as it's over, walked out and completely forgot everything about it? <laughs> I know that's also like every math test that anybody's ever taken. <laughs> <laughs> except for except Karen. <laughs> except Karen. Seriously, though, that part is the part that convicted me the most. When I was a kid, my mom used to call me a space cadet. Uh, and it's because we had, in our backyard, we had a, uh, a step probably like this, but it was not two steps, it was just one, so it was pretty steep. And right about here, there was a board. Uh, it was just something to hang on to. It was just a little, little board right there. And right behind me was our kitchen door. So I'd be out in the backyard playing and doing whatever I was doing. We didn't have we didn't have tablets or anything like that. So I was playing and doing, maybe I was reading a book. And I would, many, many times, I would step up from that steep step and try to walk right into the kitchen and bump my head so bad <laughs> that I'd be like, is it bleeding? Do I still have hair in there? 
I did. I do. But it was not a one-time thing. It was not a two-time thing. It was not a thing. It often. <laughs> People have to be dumb on to. But I would make the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hit my head as much anymore. <laughs> Physically. But I bump my head all the time. Yeah. In a spiritual sense. Yeah. 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 I want him to perfect that. So how can I ever expect to change and to grow if I continue to make the same mistakes? If I don't apply the lessons that I've learned into my life. We have to ask God to plant that word so deep in us so that when the time comes to apply the lesson, and to cross that bridge, we get it right. Amen. And when we do that, we'll be blessed. We'll be blessed. Yes. Those who consider themselves religious and yet don't keep a tight rein on their tongues do deceive themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. And their religion is worthless. That's the word. Not my name. God. Amen. Talk to him. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress. Yes. And to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Mm -hmm. See, we oftentimes are looking out for our own interests. We want to do what's best for us. But it says, it, it flips that. Yeah. It flips that and it says, look out for others. Amen. That's the religion that God has as pure and false. It's countercultural. It is. I understand. But that's what it says. And furthermore, to become polluted by the world means failing to let go of the bitterness that hardens our hearts and makes us cold and defensive, even to God's voice. Mm -hmm. Even to God's voice. We have got to keep ourselves open yes. to hear what the Spirit is saying because we have a charge. We are the believers. We are the light of the world. Yes. John 8 and 47 says, whoever belongs to God, whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. Amen. If you've accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you belong to God. Amen. And you have the ability to hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. You have to practice. You have to believe and not doubt. No noise in this world can block him out. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither life, nor death, angels, nor demons, neither fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen? No power in the sky or on the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to close today by leading you in a prayer. But it's not the kind of prayer that you're used to. Karen, mm -hmm. what did you do? Tell me to do it while we do this. It'll make more sense after that. <laughs> So um, Caleb mentioned that I'm in the step class. Uh, and in the step class, we, we practice different types of prayer, practice different types of, of, of getting close and communing with God. And one of those prayers is called the prayer of presence. Okay? So most of us think about prayer in a very common format. We pray at church. We pray before dinner. We pray at night before bedtime. And it usually involves a lot of us talking and not a lot of listening. We ask for a bunch of stuff. We usually say, sorry, it was not so good. And please help me be better tomorrow. So since God wanted to talk to me, wanted me to talk about hearing his voice, I want us to practice that before we leave, before we go back into worship. We'll do that next. So to do, do that, I'm going to read an excerpt from a book by Marjorie Thompson. It's called Soul Feast. And we're going to practice being in the presence of God and listening to that still, small voice. Where else better to do that? So what I want you to do, she 
kick it out a bit and find a posture that allows you to be relaxed but alert. It helps if your, your neck and spine are aligned. Going for 100% anticipation. Close your eyes and breathe deeply several times. Turn your attention to God's presence. Let yourself be fully aware of the mystery of His love that surrounds and upholds all of creation, including you. God is breathing life. God's presence fill your consciousness and just rest in His presence. Just as you might with someone you love dearly. And feel no need to speak to Him, just to be with Him. Let yourself be like a child, cradled in the lap of a wonderful parent. close to Jesus' heart. Find an image that allows you to be held in God's embrace. And it's so good. Over 
return back into worship now. Now take your time. And please 